Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer Podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my good friend and co-host, Ananga Sivir. This week, we're discussing how you can set healthy boundaries to help ease social anxiety. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shan. It's so good to be with you again for another episode. The definition of a boundary is a line that separates me from you. Also, sometimes described as where I end and you begin. And we all have boundaries around our homes, for instance, but we often struggle to define and maintain them around ourselves. So for the property, you have your property lines, you have your particular space and driveway and the area around you that's all yours. Everybody knows that that's a separate space. but. For you as a being, sometimes if you don't have boundaries, you let other people kind of spill into your world, control, cause all kinds of anxiety and stress when you don't know where you end and they begin. Yeah, I think we all have different feelings about boundaries and different natures, which set us up in how we can maintain or establish boundaries. It was something I had to learn. It didn't come very easily to me. It's something you've helped me with. Now I quite like my boundaries. And I will say that witnessing you over a decade and seeing that shift in you has been really beautiful because you have been and are such a kind, generous person. And sometimes not having those boundaries in place, you wouldn't even see or realize that somebody might be trying to control you or being passive aggressive and, and you wanting to, to show up in that space of kindness uh, would sometimes get trampled on without really knowing it. Yeah, it's true. One of my mentors said that we tend to think that everyone thinks the same as us. So if we wouldn't encroach on somebody else's boundaries, we don't think they would do it to us. And if we're being honest with other people, we might assume that they're being honest with us. And if Mm. we're trying to be kind to others, we assume that they're operating in the same way. True. But that's not always the case. So it's not really a defect or a flaw in us in that we're acting with empathy and and we respect other people's space. But definitely something that some of us have to learn is that it's not always reciprocated and not everyone operates the same same way. And also, sometimes people are absolutely fine and fabulous. They've just got flexible boundaries. Culturally, we all have very different boundaries, all all kinds of boundaries, household boundaries, body boundaries. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have a lot to learn, but the first thing we, we need to learn is about our own comfort and our own boundaries and self-respect. And we need boundaries around our physical space. We need them around our thoughts and our beliefs. And everything personal to us is contained within our personal boundary. And I'd like to say that on the flip side of that, sometimes the boundaries we erect are impenetrable and to a fault. Mm, I was just thinking that. Yeah, and so I can speak from that. Whatever your experience is, perhaps it's betrayal. We'll just use that as a as a good example. You might decide to armor up and to set thirteen rings of fire surrounded by you know centurions surrounded by whatever it is, right? To just to protect you, whether that be physical or or mental or spiritual, whatever that might look like. And so, while you've been doing the work over the years to uh, increase and improve your boundary setting, I've been doing the work to relax some of mine, relax some of the ones that that I erected um, subconsciously when I was younger. And so part of the boundaries that I handle beautifully haven't always been that way. I've been a little bit more rigid and 
unavailable and have learned to release and let those down a bit where I need to, not in the spaces where where it wouldn't be healthy. But anyway, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And I think it's um, a good point to discuss. It reminds me of like setting an electric fence. I know in my own life, there's been a couple of areas where I've really put an electric fence up, <laughs> a high voltage boundary. Yeah. And then as I've recovered myself behind that and, and settled myself behind that, I've been able to turn the voltage down. <laughs> yes, right. Just get a bit of a zap if you come through it now, not a, not a major shock. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's a, that's a great analogy. I love that. But yeah. I think, again, it, it's very personal. It's good to explore our own nature and our own needs. And I think really that all comes under the definition of healthy boundaries. They're our boundaries. Right. And the only person they have to work for is us. Sometimes somebody's going to have a brick wall around their house. Sometimes they've just got a little chain fence. Sometimes they've got an open lawn, but you still know there's a defining line there. Right. And it will be what that householder feels comfortable with around their own property. And same for us. We don't need to explain them or justify them to anybody else. It just needs to be what works for us. And we can review them as we've just said, and we can change them, we can upgrade them, we can downgrade them, but we need them. And there are several different types of boundaries as we're talking about boundaries throughout this episode. There are physical, mental, and emotional boundaries. So again, the physical is our personal space and privacy. The mental boundary is our thoughts, beliefs, values, choices, and opinions. And then, of course, emotional are our emotions and and personal feelings about things. Physical boundaries are more obvious and usually easier to uphold, but our mental and emotional boundaries are equally important as the physical ones, especially when you're trying to manage stress and anxiety, social anxiety, whatever it is that you're navigating through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And the more we feel, self-respecting and self-supporting, the easier it is to define those mental and emotional boundaries and to uphold them. So really good self-care and uh, personal development work. And why we need boundaries beyond the obvious is that healthy boundaries, again, reduce anxiety by supporting self-respect and the right to express ourselves and our needs, to give ourselves that space and understanding that how we feel and what we need matters. And boundaries give us freedom to live our life as we see fit based on our personal beliefs and values. These healthy boundaries honor and support our free will. And there's such a wonderful teaching to anybody who's witnessing you Uh, living that way, whether you're raising children, siblings, good friends, co-workers, will learn from how you set your boundaries. And these same boundaries protect us from control and from being controlled by others, which is huge. Yeah, and becoming more prevalent issues of control and also expectations from others really is a wonderful exercise in self-reflection, which is one of the key healing teachings of India's ancient science of life, Ayurveda, which we often talk about on the podcast. Just knowing ourselves, knowing our needs, really working with self, self-study, self looking at ourselves and self-respect and giving ourselves this healthy space that we can operate within. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you're talking about putting yourself in a bit of a container, but you have that freedom within it to express yourself fully. So you actually have more freedom when you have good boundaries than without. Yeah. And more spaciousness in the way that you live, even though it seems like you're in a container. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Fully. And then of course, on the other side of healthy boundaries is the lack of healthy boundaries. If you, if you don't have them, This can lead to increased anxiety and overwhelm and people-pleasing and 
oh my goodness, if you don't have boundaries, that really does, as you mentioned, leave us open to the expectations of others. The absence of boundaries can also cause resentment. And this makes me think of that the codependent nature of human beings and how you can give and give and give to somebody. And then you have this expectation if you're in a codependent relationship that, well, look at all I've given you. Um, Why don't you behave the way that I want you to behave? And in a codependent relationship, there's that you can almost see the play happening before your eyes. Okay, I'm going to do this and that person's going to receive it this way and so on and so forth. And then as the one of the partners starts to reclaim their own boundaries, then there's resentment that can pop up in in that way as well. Wait wait a minute, but I did all of this for you and and you're not going to do X, Y, and Z for me? So that's one piece of it that I thought I'd bring forward. But even if you're not in a codependent relationship, you can still, if you don't have boundaries, that resentment can pop up as we may look back on an event or an exchange where we felt like we weren't respected. Yeah. Sometimes we can feel burnt out as well. We can feel like we've overextended ourselves because our boundaries aren't set firmly in place. We're not feeling congruent about our needs and able to express them, you know, cleanly. And then we can feel burnt out, overextended, or increased anxiety if we've stepped into something that really was just too much for us. Um, Then we can look back and feel a bit resentful because we feel like, I knew this was going to make me feel unwell or overwhelmed or more anxious. And and it's happened. (laughs) And we're not happy, but only we can give ourselves that respect and that container to operate safely within. Uh, You brought up some quotes that you found really supportive around boundary setting from a a new book that just came out called How to Meet Yourself, the Workbook for Self-Discovery. And I believe that was written by Dr. Nicole LaPera. Yeah. Um, Share those with us. Dr. Nicole shares some really excellent sound bites on um, how we interact with each other and uh, boundaries. And so I have three here that I think are helpful to reflect on. So the first one is how people respond to my boundaries isn't my responsibility. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what people say about you behind your back isn't, isn't any of our business either. Yeah. Or worrying that others are going to get upset by our boundaries. Mm -hmm. A friend recently who was in a difficult situation with, putting forth boundaries with somebody that was really pushing it, really not respecting. And uh, another friend said that the only people that don't respect your boundaries are the people that aren't comfortable with you having them. And that's never a healthy thing. So, yeah, we were allowed our boundaries. We're, that's a given. Everyone's allowed to set their own boundaries. But it's not our responsibility how other people feel about them. Mm. And um, that can be really tricky if we're inclined to people please or we're inclined to rescue other people's feelings or we're just plain uncomfortable with other people maybe not being happy with us or not agreeing with us. It can be quite a thing to navigate, but that's the fact of it. How people respond to my boundaries isn't my responsibility. It's their responsibility. Another great quote is, I do not need to always answer the phone or respond to texts immediately. I will respond when I have the energy. And that's such a healthy way to be and communicate in the world because we went from letters to faxes to texts and emails to having a moment to breathe and to think about how we, we want to respond to this immediate okay, well, I texted you, respond to me now. Or I called you, why didn't you pick up the phone? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Which is an expectation. It is an expectation. And we are doing ourselves such a beautiful favor by taking a beat and deciding, you know what, right now I'm not going to pick up that phone. I will respond when I have the energy, but right now I don't. Right now I can't have that conversation. Because oftentimes we know what's going to be 
coming forward through a conversation, whether it be at work or whether it be with a, a loved one or a friend. Or, and, and it's not that you don't care. It's not that you're not available. It's just at, in that moment, you might not have the energy to be available for whatever is coming at you. Yeah. And sometimes we might be having a, a genuine interaction with another human being. And um, it's going to break the the rapport of that exchange, the connection of that exchange, if we're going to jump up and respond to everything immediately. It doesn't feel great, does it, if you're with somebody and they're they're jumping on their phone. And the uh, third quote, meeting my needs might mean I disappoint other people, and that's okay, because adults can deal with disappointment. I love that. Yeah, I do too. And it's... Very similar to the first one, that uh, it's not our responsibility how other people respond. But, um, yeah, if somebody's getting uncomfortable or irate about our boundaries, then it's not necessarily a very adult response. Adults should be able to deal with disappointment. And again, you know, disappointment uh, (laughs) is not an appropriate response to somebody setting what they feel is a boundary that they need. Right. And all of these are invitations for, for ourselves and others to take a look at their own behavior. Mm-hmm. Because usually when people are having a fit about a boundary that you've set, is something's triggered in them that has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. And they don't know that. But even in that moment, you don't have to worry about it because it's not, a, it's not about you. <laughs> and you still get to set your boundaries and be like, okay, well. Good luck with that. And I mean that with love and kindness. I know I can be a little bit snarky sometimes, but we do not have to make sure everybody else is okay all the time. Mm -hmm. We don't. And it's not always easy. It can be quite an adjustment, Mm -mm. getting used to that. And I think these quotes can be really great prompts for exercises like journaling, journaling and self-reflecting, or for use with EFT tapping. Um, which for new listeners is something we talk a lot about on the podcast. It's a technique where you uh, verbalize something you're struggling with and tap on meridian points on the body. You can find out more about tapping on our website at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT. So tapping is really great for working with our discomforts and things that we want to strengthen and uh, strengthening our resolve with creating boundaries. I've done quite a bit of that kind of work with clients in the past. So, you know, you can read a statement like meeting my needs might mean I disappoint other people and that's okay because adults can deal with disappointment, but we might feel like, oh, as we're reading it, it just doesn't feel comfortable for me. We might think, you know, I'm going to disappoint my mom or my dad or my friend or a partner. And we start seeing that disappointed face or we start anticipating interactions that we're just not comfortable with. So journaling, reflecting, Taking some um, instruction on boundaries, have a look on YouTube, read a book, find find some fortification that that helps us feel more comfortable. But EFT tapping is also a fantastic way to uh, tap down that discomfort and make us feel more confident and more congruent in setting boundaries. And again, you know, the definition of that boundary, as we said at the beginning of this episode, being knowing where I end and you begin. Mm-hmm. So not having somebody's disappointment leech over the fence into our space because that is their thing. It doesn't belong in our space. After the quick break, we'll talk about boundaries for Ayurvedic Vata types. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we need guidance or a neutral party to help us sort things out when we're feeling overwhelmed and unsure of ourselves. BetterHelp Online therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and then learn productive coping skills. When I partnered with BetterHelp at the beginning of the pandemic, I was fully supported. It was a very good experience for me. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, and it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist 
And if things aren't clicking between you and your therapist, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It really couldn't be easier. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com slash slayer. Ananga, let's dig into what it's like to have a, a Vata constitution and to set boundaries, because I know that for Vata types, boundaries are a little bit more challenging than Kapha and Pitta. Yeah. So when we're talking about Vata, we're talking about a mind-body type, which we often discuss from Ayurveda, again, India's ancient science of life. So Vata types are the type that have a very ethereal nature, an airy, ethereal nature. They can be very changeable, creative, busy, busy people often flitting from one thing to another. And holding boundaries can be more challenging for this particular type, the Vata type, because they, by nature, are nervous of confrontation and conflict. They really are uncomfortable with conflict or the potential of conflict or confrontation. So if boundaries feel like they might bring about a difficult exchange with somebody else, it can be challenging for them to set those markers, to set those boundaries. Yeah, and the other challenge for Vata types too is that they tend to overbook themselves because they have the mind and body type most likely to suffer with the fear of missing out missing out on, on whatever it is that's available to them. And that's a completely different kind of boundary issue. That's a personal boundary where it's helpful to keep a calendar, write down your commitments, and actually to slow down. Because you can become even more stressed when you realize, oh my goodness, what have I done? I have all of these things that I need to do within the next few days, and, and maybe I don't have enough energy for all of it, or it just feels like, I want to cancel everything because I've committed to so many things and it really causes this loop of suffering. Yeah, it can be quite challenging. They can double book themselves by saying yes to things quickly. They can say yes to things they don't really feel comfortable with, but again, it can be challenging for them to set the boundary and, and say no. Sometimes they can fry people out because they're, they've got too much going on to give attention evenly to their relationships or, or they might set something up with you and then they're like, oh, sorry, you know, we're, we're running five hours late or we're just going to do these three things before we get to you. And um, that can be stressful for them and for others in relationship. Not to speak ill of the Vata types because they're fantastically creative and funny and when they do settle down with you, they're the best company. They really are wonderful. But um, it's, it's just part of that nature that they can feel um, a little bit challenged in setting boundaries. They might overcommit because they don't want to upset others, and they might overcommit because they don't want to miss out on something that looks like fun. Whereas the pitta type, the more fiery type, they've got no problem keeping a calendar, keeping a diary. They'll even schedule their free time. So they're all sorted when it comes to to boundaries. If they're out of balance, they might tread on other people's boundaries a little bit, defining their own space and needs and certainly time management. They're on it. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Before you started talking about Pitta, I was thinking about how uh, I really have to manage my Pitta tendencies with Vata friends if I do have something planned and it doesn't come together as we planned so that, you know, five hours or that got to do three things or making a beautiful meal. And then it's getting cold because they're doing whatever they're that kind of thing. And then finding myself in that, in a judgment space instead of an allowing space. But generally I'll just ask for what I need and try to, find some humor in it because there's usually humor in those kinds of things. Yeah, that's Peter's saving grace when they can find the humor. 
Right. But yeah, I mean, they don't like to be kept waiting. They're organized and they expect others to be too. Yeah. They say they're going to be somewhere at a certain time. They're going to be there unless there's a really big and good reason not to be. And then how about Kafa? How about the Kafa type? Kafa tend to be more easygoing. Yeah. Around those things, they can be very um, open-hearted and open-homed. They like to cook for people. They can be quite happy kind of lounging in a corner of a room when there's a a big event going on and everyone's quite fizzy and and loud. They are quite happy to just kind of sit in their own space and uh, let things happen around them. I've really enjoyed this conversation today. I think that setting boundaries is key to easing social anxiety and overwhelm and everything that comes with just feeling like we're getting run over by people or information or whatever is happening when you say, whoa, wait a minute, what is it that I need? Where am I? And where do I end and you begin? I just, I love that. Yeah. And I think this is a really good time of year to explore boundaries. It's a great testing ground, isn't it? We're coming up to the the holiday season, we're heading into the middle of winter where we tend to be indoors and around other people more. We've kind of got less space at this time of year. Mm-hmm. We're all bonded up inside. There's more social interaction. So it's a good time to practice and really to look at it with a playful spirit of practice and something that we want to work on, but not to expect that we can just instantly have it nailed and, and we're suddenly good at boundaries because it really is something that we have to uh, work with for life and adjust. They're not set in stone, they are flexible. But a good time of year to set some up if you haven't um, got strong boundaries or adjust your existing boundaries or just sit with yourself and reflect on what your needs are to get through the holiday season comfortably and into the year ahead. How do you want to show up socially? How do you want to be seen and uh, treated? How do you want to be sitting in your own space um, in accordance with what you want to do with your next year of your life? And I would also invite you to be exactly who you are, to show up in all of your beauty and brilliance and energy, because there's no one else like you. There's not one other person that brings the exact same gifts and energy to to life and friends and family, give yourself a break and realize that you you've got this and you're in an incredible light and being just exactly as you are right now. So when you decide to set a boundary, you've just committed another act of loving kindness to yourself and big picture to others and to those who love you. Mm, yeah. And do come and share your successes and your experiments. <laughs> yes. In our private Facebook group, just look us up on Facebook. Look up Anxiety Slayer and you'll find our private group. It's a wonderful, supportive space. We've had a couple of nice shares in the last week. People going out and tackling things that they'd previously found challenging. Mm. Yeah. Come and share and you'll get a lot of support there. If you're looking for additional support setting boundaries, our popular social anxiety course includes a guiding tapping session on setting boundaries and saying no. And here's a helpful hint. No thank you is a complete sentence. Get 50% off our social anxiety course through the end of the year by visiting anxietyslayer.teachable.com. You can enroll today for 38 US. Thanks so much for listening.